What's up, music makers? It's Luke from Sojourner Tracks, and today we're talking about Auto-Tune in Logic Pro, taking a deep dive into the pitch correction plugin. Let's take a look. So in Logic, I just pulled up a vocal here, um, and the first thing you're going to want to know is where to find the pitch correction tool or plugin, and that is under pitch pitch correction. Um, so it is not called auto-tune. If that's, uh, I know some people have uh, struggled to find this plugin um, or to know exactly what they were looking for within the Logic stock library. It's called pitch correction, um, not auto-tune, but it does the same thing. And as you can see, this is kind of uh, due for an update. It's not the uh, newest plugin in the stable, um, but it does the trick. And uh, we'll go over all of this stuff, but I want to get you going fast. So I'm going to go over first the very most important parts of this. So number one is where this goes in the chain. I've got this as the first plugin 90, 95% of the time. Um, you want to give the pitch correction the first look at your audio as it goes through. So you m maybe could put a EQ or a compression here. Um, if you really felt like it, it needed it, but um, I find it best to not confuse this plugin with any other plugins coming ahead of it. So I always put it first. Um, the next thing you're going to want to look at is the key. Finding the key of your song is going to make this plugin really shine. Um, right now it's set to chromatic, which means we're using all 12 notes. Um, and that works, but depending on how the song was sung, how close the singer was to pitch, uh, chromatic can get really messy. Um, because if you are trying to hit a B and it's more like an A sharp, uh, autotune is going to drag it to the A sharp instead. Um, and that can actually get really nasty. So you want to find the key of your song. And if you don't know how to do that, um, one quick tip I would have for you is find that note that works over your whole song. You know, it's that one note you can drone over the whole thing and it works. That's probably the root note of your song um, in a major scale for a lot of instances. Um, otherwise, you can you can always uh, reach out to me and I can help you figure that out. If you do know all of the notes in your song, uh, all the notes that you're using, just Google that and you know, Google will give you the answer as well. Um, but if you can avoid using chromatic, that is best. So uh, I'm going to click on chromatic. I know already that this song, since I wrote it, is in the key of G, uh, G major, which it's actually in the key of E minor, but E minor and G major, it's the same set of notes. So that's really not going to make a difference. But as you can see here, there's tons of different scales here. Um, that you can use. And then you can also create your own. So, you know, we're in the key of G major um, right now, but say um, within the key of G major, you had um, an F once in a while. You had like a flat seven thing going on. So you can add, just by clicking on this note, you can add that F in there. Um, you know, depending on your song, you may have some notes that aren't exactly within the major scale. So um, anyway, so right now it's set up for G major. Um, if we go back to the major scale, you'll see that. And then the, the second control that you have to be aware of is the response control. And now this is um, not to be confused with like a mix control, which is how I always thought of it um, when I was starting out. This is actually the time it takes for the pitch correction to grab that note and pull it into place. So the faster you go, the more jerky that motion is going to be, which is going to be your uh, your auto-tune effect. So the, the, the further away you get from the fast, it's going to be more gradual and less noticeable. So it does, in effect, function like a mix knob. So let's listen to do a little bit of this. Uh, I'm going to bypass it completely so you can hear it, and then I'll start working with the response knob. 
Mouse from the wreckage, you narrowly escape. But recovery is solitary, in a grave you cannot shake. Mouse from the wreckage, you narrowly escape. But recovery is solitary, in a grave you cannot shake. Mouse from the wreckage, you narrowly escape. But recovery is solitary, in a grave you cannot shake. Mouse from the wreckage, you narrowly escape. But recovery is solitary, in a grave you cannot shake. Mouse from the wreckage, you narrowly escape. But recovery is solitary, in a grave you cannot shake. Mouse from the wreckage, you narrowly escape. But recovery is solitary, in a grave you cannot shake. So you'll see there's there's kind of a sweet spot in there, and it tends to be somewhere around the middle here at 160 or so, where you can you can tell that the tuning is nice. It's It sounds pleasing, um, but you don't hear the effect. And then as you go lower than that, or faster than that, I should say, um, you do really start to pick up on that uh, auto-tune style effect. And, um, you know, I've used it both ways. Um, it, it, it's actually kind of nice to... Um, just set this somewhere here in the middle um, because it's fast and easy. If you have a, a, a passage that's really not badly out of tune and you can set it here and just kind of forget about it. Um, the next thing I wanted to, to talk about is this correction amount here. So if you're watching here, it's, it's actually telling you note to note. Um, you saw the notes bouncing around here on the keyboard. It's telling you which note you're, you're pulling into um and how far off and how, how much correction it's happening so i think this is in cents yeah it's in cents so you know you're 20 cents sharp and it's correcting it back to zero or whatever um the other um thing you want to look at here is range um don't get tripped up by this this is not for you know if you're talking about normal um, audio tracks that you would use this on, you pretty much want to leave this at normal all the time. Uh, I looked in the manual and it actually says that low is for things 100 hertz and below. So we're talking like lower than a bass guitar. So, um, you know, I, there's not too many instances I can imagine where you'd really need this to be at low. Um, the other thing that you're not gonna probably use too often, but that I do wanna talk about here is the global tuning. So when you have global tuning on, that's basically going off of the global tuning within your Logic project. So, you know, for most projects, that's gonna be A440, which is the basic tuning for just about everything. If you turn this off, then you can actually use this reference pitch here. So if you have something um, that was sung, you know, maybe it was sung to something, to instruments that were sharp. And you can actually, you know, you can move this, you know, if, if you had a vocalist sing to an instrument that was tuned sharp, well, on purpose or on accident, whatever you got, and you figure out what that, you know, how sharp it is, basically, you can adjust for that here. So, you know, it's, if it's, it, the whole thing is like, 11 cents sharp then you pull it down by 11 cents and then you're starting from zero essentially um, so that's going to be you know a pretty uncommon um, use case um, maybe you know maybe if you're dealing with samples or something like that you know especially stuff that was recorded to tape or vinyl or whatever a lot of that stuff is not uh, in a 440 exactly because they mess with the speeds and whatnot um, and then the other thing is the detune. So this is kind of the same um, control, except with the reference pitch, you're doing that on the way in to the pitch correction. And on the detune, you're doing that on the way out. So after it's been pitch corrected, you can then detune it by a number of cents if you wanted to do that for uh, whatever reason. And that's pretty much it. So... If you would like some help finding the scale or the key of your song, let me know. If you'd like to see a video on manual tuning in Logic Pro, let me know. And if this video is helpful to you, 
give me a like, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.